boy, we brought the trolls out yesterday, didn't we? Man, tell you what, the uh, thing you see in psychology, something you see in normal life as well, it's pretty easy to spot. There's, there's people in life that have grown up believing things or doing things and they think that those things are right because they've always done them so if they've always done them and they haven't seen any physical problems personally which usually they have seen them they've just chosen to not notice them if they've seen these things or they haven't seen them then that justifies whatever they want to do and you see it a lot in like the uh, people who talk about uh, homelessness and homeless people that are begging for money you know the way for normal people who are assholes to feel good about themselves for not giving a homeless person even a dollar or fifty cents is they just say they probably have more money than I am than I have and they're gonna probably just use it for uh, drugs and alcohol and then they can go on about their life and even though that's probably not the case that person probably just wants some money so they can go get some food maybe get lucky and have enough money to maybe spend one night in a hotel so they can get a shower and maybe even wash their clothes you know that's the reality and these people want to feel better about themselves and they want to feel better about being assholes so that's the way they do it and the same can be said for these people that want to make any excuse they can for eating meat you know for being meat eaters I've always done it I, had, I don't see any problem with it yet we'll talk a little bit about the medical aspects of it right now eating meat is 80 percent of disease in the world that's just a fact 80 percent of the diseases that humans have on a daily basis that people die of that people get sick from that childhood problems are caused by 80 percent of those are diet related and those diets that are related are meat that's that's just fact that's a fact sorry hate to hate to break that to you but that's a fact the other problem is you know heart disease kidney failure diabetes um, intestinal parasites you know thyroids liver uh, intestinal uh, all kinds of intestinal issues all of the cancers 100 percent of the cancers are caused uh, everybody typically has cancerous cells in their body and those cells are set off by the eating of animal products those cells are actually set off by that so by not eating animal products you have a much less chance of getting cancer you know and you know I mean these are just things that uh, people should just want to do you know like when you look at uh, something that I always thought was really funny you know I mean funny and sad you know not funny but funny haha -ha, just funny sad was uh, when I was adopted I was seven years old my father was smoker he was 40 and I was allergic to nicotine I got really really sick I would throw up around nicotine and it wasn't the smoke it was the nicotine the, the green gross shadow that's on the ceiling and the doors and the car windows and you know that kind of nasty white smoke that gets all over everything and then the the, the brown uh, coloration around the fingers and 
I was allergic to that, the nicotine. So, when I was adopted at seven, my father, his father, had died about, I think, four years earlier from smoking. And he died when he was in his 60s. And he, he was, uh, I think, 60s or early 70s, really early 70s. So, he died of emphysema. After getting adopted, it was about, I think, around two years after I was adopted, my father's mother died of emphysema. Same thing. She was around the same age, around 60s, late 60s, early 70s. My dad stopped smoking because of me, because I was, when I was adopted, so he stopped smoking about uh, a year maybe less after I was adopted and he developed emphysema and uh, he was about 42 when that happened and in 1986 we had to move from Colorado to Nebraska because the his doctors told him he needs to get out of the um, the climate that Colorado had for because he had emphysema you know or he had starting to get emphysema now in that time his sister, who was married to hit one of his friends from high school, had uh, been a smoker her whole life. She came downstairs one morning, and her husband was making her breakfast while she was sitting at the uh, table in the other room. She lit up a cigarette, and she conked over right on her face and died. And she was uh, in a coma for about three weeks and then she died so my dad lost his sister his mom and his father from smoking now you would think that would make people think you know but in most cases that they they'll point to somebody else like George Burns who had a, a glass of uh, uh, brandy or something. I forget what it was. I think it was like, not brandy, it was, uh, I forget what he used to drink. Something like that. It wasn't brandy though, it was like whiskey or something like that. Uh, he would have a glass of that and a cigar his whole life. I think he died when he was like 98 or 100 years old or something like that. So people will point to somebody like that and say, yeah, we can all do that. Same as the feminists. You know, the feminists will talk about somebody like Ronda Rousey and say, like, women are strong, just as strong as men. When the fact is that she's an outlier. She's not the, she's not the norm. She's the outlier. You know, we have people out here and we have people out here that are men and people that are women. And then we have people in the middle. And the people in the middle are the normal people, the people that are average. You know, so most people are average. And they'll point to the outliers and they'll say that's why I can do it because of them you know so my dad was the same way he ended up uh, because he quit smoking he had started smoking when he was 15 he quit when he was 40 he developed emphysema at 42 got worse and worse he had uh, tuberculosis from it uh, three times uh, one time was when he was, uh, uh, it was around Christmas time, and we actually couldn't celebrate Christmas because he ended up in the hospital. He ended up having a, a uh, lung, uh, like 45% of his lungs cut out. He ended up on oxygen and had an oxygen machine in the house and was on several medications per day and breathers he had a, a puffer that he had to take and all this was after he stopped smoking cigarettes and when he was 65 and I was living in Japan he died so the reason why I'm telling you this is because there's a lot of these people who are meat eaters that they want to act like all of these problems that are caused directly from eating meat aren't a problem. 
because they're not a problem for me right now. You know, I eat bacon and eggs every morning for breakfast, and I'm not unhealthy, so it must be fine. You know, and later on, this is what I think is funny: is later on when they get sick, well then they blame everybody else for it. They become like a feminist victim, like the SJWs. You know, they start talking about how the the uh, Social Security disability doesn't give you enough money and how all these places are, are, you know, robbing you for, like, your medication. And, you know, like, my dad used to always talk about this stuff. And it was your fault. It's your fault. If you didn't smoke, it says right on the package... You don't even have to have the shit on the package. I mean, you, everybody knows smoking cigarettes is bad for you. Anybody should know that. I mean, you're not a fucking idiot. M most people should know that eating meat is bad for you. You know? So if you want to act like it's not bad for you, and then you get sick, and then try to blame everyone else for it, what the fuck is that about? You know? But that's what these people do. So... I've got these morons coming on my page. And I'll say this as slowly as I can so that these idiots can hear it and maybe listen, though I know these people are probably trolls and are just trying to set somebody off and try to get somebody to actually react to them because they're a fucking idiot. So... As what I said last night, as per to what I said last night, we'll up the ante to something that everybody knows humans can't do. Can you have a sandwich that's tuna and mayo that's been sitting on your, de on your table or in a window and you drive to work and your work just so happens to be at a pig farm with omnivores. Pigs are omnivores. Can you drive to work with your tuna fish sandwich on the dash and forget about it when you drive to work and it's been sitting on the dash in the springtime, so we'll say it's you know, 75 degrees outside, maybe 90 in your car. So it's been sitting on your dash in 90 degree weather for five hours, and you got two sandwiches. Can a human eat that sandwich without dying? Because I tell you what, an omnivore could. Because there's a few things that distinguish an omnivore from a herbivore. One thing that tells you right away is this. Omnivores and carnivores can't move their mouth from side to side because they chop meat and swallow it whole. They don't need to chew it up they can actually swallow meat whole because their internal stomach acid is on par with battery acid so they don't actually have they can they can eat hair they can eat like really nasty rancid meat they even think it smells good most omni I, I don't know of any omnivore that you could you know you could give like a week old nasty like you know I don't know, like, you know, roadkill, something that's been out on the road that's been smashed for a week. They might see that shit, and they'll just chew it like it's fucking beef jerky, you know. Omnivores can do that, and carnivores can do that. Herbivores can't do that. If a herbivore does that, they'll get sick and die. Because their stomach acid, is their pH is very, very low, you know. If their pH gets above... A certain thing your intestine your stomach will actually eat itself and it'll start eating your body so you want to keep your intestinal acidity down you know so the other thing is 
your intestines as a human are about 12 to 15 times longer than your body. And that's how most herbivores are. All, all herbivores, actually. Their, their intestinal uh, walls are very, very long. And if you look at the overall total amount of surface area, which uh, inside the human bowels and inside a cow's bowels, they're designed to take in as much nutrients as they can from the food that, that it, you eat. So there's these little pockets that stick up inside the intestines, just like a cow, if you've ever seen cow intestine. You know, if you've ever been to a Mexican area where they sell cow intestine, you'll know what a cow's intestines look like. They have all these little, po these little pockets where things get stuck down inside. And they it does that because it wants to get as much nutrients as it can before it passes it through the bowels. On the other hand, if you're an omnivore or a carnivore and you eat meat, this is what's really funny, is their body has evolved to have smooth intestines and their intestines are only four to seven times longer than their body and they pass all the meat that they eat out very quickly because they just want to get the nutrients but not the fat. That's the whole point. They don't want to store the fat in their body, which is why when a dog eats food, an hour later they have to take a shit. And it passes through their body very quickly because they only want the nutrients and they want to get it the fuck out of their body before the fat comes on because the fat doesn't do them any good. They don't want the fat. But a doctor will tell you that a human, who is an omnivore, wants fats and that there is good fats. There's no such thing as good fats. Humans don't need fat. Just like the animal that you're trying to eat that has fat, they didn't get that fat from eating fat from another animal. Their body made that fat the same way your body makes fat, the same way your body makes protein from your ingestion. That's something I always tell people that are talking about meat eaters. How do you get your protein? I always tell them a very simple thing. The same place the cow did. Okay. If a cow can get protein, and you have to eat a cow to get protein, then where did the cow get its protein from? Because it didn't eat a cow. You know, These are just common things that are very easy to understand. And people want to grab onto one little thing and straw man it, because they don't want to think that something they're doing could be bad. You know? that I can change what I'm doing in my life and make a real difference. But I don't want to make a difference because I want to be, I want to do what I want to do. I'm selfish. I'm a prick. I'm a fucking asshole. I want to do what I want to do. Fuck everyone else. You know? That's, these, that's how these people are. That's their mental capacity for life. They don't care about you. They don't care about anyone else. It's the reason why these fucking people would go out and buy a Hummer, you know? They'd get a car that uses seven miles to the gallon, because fuck everyone else, you know? Fuck the environment. I'm only going to be here for 70 years if I don't die from smoking and eating meat, and once I'm dead, who gives a fuck about my kids and my kids' kids and my kids' kids' kids? Who gives a fuck about them? I only give a fuck about me, you know? That's how these people are. And they'll make any fucking excuse they can for why it's perfectly fine for humans to eat meat. And they'll actually try to say that humans have evolved to eat meat. What's evolved to eat meat is our culture. Our anatomy, the human anatomy, is not designed to digest meat. What the body has to do, or it dies, is it actually has to extract two things from the human bones to digest it. It does that with phosphorus to digest the meat, protein, and calcium, which it has to extract from the bone and urinate out for four hours after you've eaten meat. So if you eat meat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, 
And this is not just meat. This is any animal products. The body can't digest those because it's an omnivore. So because you're a herbivore and not an omnivore, your body can't digest any of that stuff. So it has to complete, continue to leach out calcium which is why the countries that eat the most meat have the most osteoporosis. Countries that have the least osteoporosis, the least cancer, the least heart disease, are all vegan or vegetarian. The people who live the longest in the world, Okinawans, they have mostly a starch-based diet. These are facts. There's over 800 studies and hundreds of books that you can look at that will tell you these things. But these people don't want to see that. They want to watch Dr. You know, Drew or some shit on the TV or something. Or watch, you know, watch some YouTube video of somebody. And they never do, they do the same thing that the feminists do. They don't actually look at the study. They don't look at the statistics. And they don't look at who did the study. Where did the money come from? Who paid for it? You know? When you trace the money back to these places that say meat is good for humans and it's fine as long as you have it in moderation, these studies are all conducted by the meat industry, the dairy industry, the egg industry, the ag board. People that have an investment in supplying you with things that keep you sick. The pharmaceutical industry. Think of it. I, I, somebody told me on my, on my page that I'm not healthy. You know, I'm not healthy. If I'm not healthy, then why do I get less than one cold per year? In my entire life, I've never taken a flu shot. I don't take flu shots. I haven't been to a hospital or a doctor's office in over 20 years. I don't take medicine. I don't take pills. I don't eat them. I'm a vegan. The reason why people need that shit is because your body is crying out, stop. Quit fucking with me. Quit putting this shit in my body. Your body is trying to tell you something and you aren't fucking smart enough to listen. You know, so I'll end it on that and I'll say it one more time very slowly. Can a human who is a herbivore, can a human eat a tuna fish sandwich with mayo that's been sitting on the car window for five hours and not get sick or die? Could you do that, not just once, but every day? Could you just say, ah, fuck it, I'm just going to leave my sandwich up there every day. I like tuna fish sandwiches. I'm just going to leave them there in my window, and I'll come back at lunch, and I'll just eat it. Not only could you do that once, but could you do that every day and not get very sick and probably die the first time you did it? Not to mention every time you did it. But you could come there every day and leave your sandwich on the dash till you finished work and then grab both the sandwiches because you forgot them and take them out and give them to the pigs and every day you could do that to the pigs and they wouldn't get sick at all ever that's because they're an omnivore you're not I'll leave it there and I shouldn't have to say anymore but I know that I'm gonna get a lot of fucking trolls and there's people that just want to they want to point out whatever they have to point out to make you have to answer them they just want they're starving for attention and they really want to try and rationalize their fucked up behavior and it's sad it's it's sad that there's people like that there's it's sad that people need that kind of attention it's sad that people can't see how much good they could do in the world if they would go vegan and if they would it, you don't even have to go like raw till four vegan like I am just vegan 
you know just eat you know it's not it's, it's not uh, expensive people always want to say it's expensive it's not expensive somebody said on my page that eating vegan food is you know like it tastes like cardboard you know which is completely bullshit that tells me automatically you don't know what you're talking about people that say like I don't like the taste of tofu well if you like the taste of beans then you like the taste of tofu because that's all fucking tofu is a bean you know if you like a fucking bean burrito then why the fuck wouldn't you like tofu because tofu actually doesn't have much of a taste at all it actually has the uh, the texture is almost depending on what kind there's like firm and semi firm and and then silken you know there's like three different styles and then silken is usually used for sweets but the typical like the way the way it tastes is kind of like uh, jello basically or not the way it tastes but the way it feels in your mouth the texture it's kind of like jello you know or like fro what do they call it fram from fram from the uh, sweet dessert you know basically that's like silken tofu is what it tastes like so and when you put tofu in something it takes on the taste of whatever you've put it in so if you make chicken noodle soup with no chicken and just throw the tofu in there it'll take on the taste of the chicken noodle soup you know if you put it into curry it'll take on the taste of the curry and then it just tastes like curry you know if you put it in spaghetti sauce it'll taste like spaghetti sauce so these people are like I don't like the way tofu tastes well you've obviously never eaten real tofu or you don't know how to fucking make it you know because I don't like tofu if you just like some Japanese people like to do just take a brick and set it on a plate and throw some soy sauce over it and just eat it with chopsticks I'm a vegan and I don't even like it that way that's gross I just I don't like the way it tastes you know I don't like the way that tastes it's too plain there's nothing to it you know basically tofu doesn't really have a taste but a lot of Japanese people say they can taste like where the tofu came from you know they know what what part of the country and different parts of the country of, of Japan have different tastes and all that stuff I, I don't know I'm not a wine connoisseur like that but with tofu but you know so I mean there's a lot of crap going that people will say like that so like I say I'll leave it there and I'm sure I'll have comments on this as well and I'll have to you know talk about it people want me to do all the research for them I've been a vegan since 1989 October of 1989 I did a bunch of studies before that so I, I've been studying about veganism for 30 years and these people want me not because they actually want to know the information because they're like religious people it doesn't matter like I could say I could tell them the information and where I got the information from and Dr. Dil Neil Bernard and Dr. John McDougall and all these you know and what book and what chapter and all these kind of things I could tell them that but it, it's it's a lot of work for me when those people don't actually care they just want they just want to like fuck with you you know that it's kind of like the citation needed type deal you know where they're like citation needed well you'll give them the citation and they won't pay any attention to it anyways they just want to throw that out there because they think it sounds intellectual and it really it just sounds stupid so I'll leave it I'll leave it there and uh, if you got any comments questions leave them in the section below thanks for watching and have a nice day so don't